So what? 35 years old, that's what that nation is. Now here's America, 226 years old. You love democracy? But there in Africa, you're trying to force these people into a system of government that you just have accepted 30 years ago, black folk got the right to vote. You're not in any moral position to tell anybody how corrupt they are. You should be quiet and let those of us who know our people go there and help them get out of that condition. But America should keep her mouth shut wherever there's a corrupt regime as much hell as America has raised on the earth. No, I will not allow America or you, Mr. Wallace, to condemn them as the most corrupt nation on earth when you have spilled the blood of human beings. Has, has Nigeria dropped an atomic bomb and killed people in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Have they killed off millions of Native Americans? How dare you put yourself in that position as a moral judge? I think you should keep quiet. Africa is in harm's way. Africa is in a dangerous time period. Black people all over the world are in need of saving. Tell me that Africa does not need saving. Tell me that Ghana does not need saving. Tell me that we in the diaspora do not need saving. European knowledge will never save you. All of the knowledge that you have. All that you have from Oxford. All that you have from Cambridge, all that you have from Sorbonne, from Harvard, from Yale, it will never save Africa because Europeans... He has called many things, but to the oppressors, Louis Farrakhan is one thing above all, a terror, a man whose words have struck fear into the hearts of those who seek to keep the masses silent. But why? Why does his message stir such fear? Why do they try so desperately to silence him? In a world where injustice is covered up, and the truth is hidden behind layers of deception, Louis Farrakhan has dared to pull back the curtain. His message is clear, direct, and unapologetic, so much so that those in power want him silenced. He has become a terror to those who oppress, and here's why. Because racist white America right. cannot stand to see a black man really free. Full of the power of God. Yeah. With a creative mind at work. With a help meet by his side. Yeah. Working to develop creative ideas for the advancement of his family and his people. Yeah. So since two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time, if the white male is going to rule, Mm. then he must crush the black male. Yeah. White male, you are wrong. Yeah. Because if in reality, because of white supremacy, you believe that in order for you to survive as a white man, you have to crush a black man's existence, then in crushing our existence, you are doing something to your own. Because ultimately, no power on earth no power. for any long period of time can keep any man from attaining what God himself has willed for that man. Yeah. And the thing that black men don't have in America or in the world is force and power to determine our destiny. Yeah. Our destiny is determined by others. We are like sheep, as the scripture teaches. And we have not had a good shepherd in front of us. How do you know that our shepherds have not been good? Because if our shepherds were good, God would be in our life. Life would be in our life. Love would be in our life. Power would be in our life. And you go for a job and they tell you, oh, I'm sorry, you're overqualified for this one. Or they tell you, I'm sorry, you don't have enough qualifications for this one. 
but it seems that your wife is qualified to hold any position. Yeah. I noticed black women on television sitting next to anchor men or she's an anchor woman. Yeah. Right. So they've already fulfilled the requirement. They've hired a minority and a black. Yeah, yeah. and a black. And a black. But it's not you. That's right. And since you and I as a people have not learned how to create a job. And you know it takes money in this world to live. Then the only avenue open for you as a man is either join the army and be all that you can never be in the society. so that you can be sent all over the world to fight for a democracy that you don't know anything about at home. Look at it, look at, look at it brothers. Each one of you is in pain. As a black man in white America, we're in pain brothers. In pain. We live with constant pain. Mm. Nobody knows our pain but God yeah. and us. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you know deep down inside you are as great yeah. as any man of greatness that you've heard about, read about, yeah. or seen in real life. You know you are as great as any one of them possibly greater. But there's no avenue of opportunity to allow you to demonstrate your individual greatness. Louis Farrakhan doesn't just speak. He exposes the lies, the corruption, the systemic oppression that has been engineered to keep people down. And for decades, his voice has rattled the very foundations of power in the United States and beyond. He speaks with passion. He speaks with purpose. He speaks for those who have been silenced. But that's also why he has become a target of government censorship and media distortion. Let's take a moment to listen to one of his most iconic speeches. When you look through the eyes of white supremacy, then you're not looking at a fellow human being. You're looking at an animal and you're going to get rid of this animal. But in order to see him as an animal, you got to be an animal yourself. I hate racism. I hate it. I hate that any man would think he's better because of some color of his skin or the lack of it. That is sickness. But what I'm dealing with is not racism, but what I'm dealing with is the end of racism. Now look at this. If the father of all human beings is black, well, you should honor your father. and honor your mother. Now the scholars of white America, the anthropologists, the historians, the geneticists agree with the Quran. The geneticist says, light skin is recessive, meaning weak. Dark skin is dominant, meaning strong. That's what they say. They say light eyes are recessive, dark eyes are dominant. You can get the recessive from the dominant, but you cannot get the dominant from the recessive. So what are they saying? They're saying that light-skinned people, you can have babies, but you can't produce that black one. The lighter you are, the less black is in there. 
So two white people can't produce yellow, much less brown or black. But the black man, oh, oh, look, this is real. The black man can produce an albino, which is blonde hair and blue eyes. So, who is the original man? You go to Nigeria, which is, if not the most corrupt nation in Africa, and it is, it could be the most corrupt nation in the world, Minister Farrakhan. Oh, and now, Mr. Wallace. It is the most corrupt nation that I have ever covered. I've been there. 25 years ago, and I've been there as recently as last year. Fine. So what? 35 years old. That's what that nation is. Now, here's America, 226 years old. You love democracy, but it, they're in Africa. You're trying to force these people into a system of government that you just have accepted 30 years ago, black folk got the right to vote. You're not in any moral position to tell anybody how corrupt they are. You should be quiet and let those of us who know our people go there and help them get out of that condition. But America should keep her mouth shut wherever there's a corrupt regime, as much hell as America has raised on the earth. No, I will not allow America or you, Mr. Wallace, to condemn them as the most corrupt nation on earth when you have spilled the blood of human beings. Has, has Nigeria dropped an atomic bomb and killed people in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Have they killed off millions of Native Americans? How dare you put yourself in that position as a moral judge? I think you should keep quiet because with that much blood on America's hands, you have no right to speak. I will speak because I don't have that blood on my hand. Yes, there's corruption there. Yes, there's mismanagement of resources. Yes, there is abuse. There's abuse in every nation on earth, including this one. So let's not play holy to moralize on them. Let's help them. I'm not moralizing. I'm asking a question and I got an answer. Why would you put it as the most corrupt regime in the world? That doesn't make sense. Can you think me. of one more corrupt? Yeah, I'm living in one. I'm living in one. Yes, you've done a hell of a thing on this earth, so you should not be the one to talk. You should be quiet when it comes to moral condemnation. Who wants to kill you? Why? I believe that conversation is raging right now in government circles because I appear to be interfering with America's foreign policy objectives in Africa and in the Middle East. They want me kind of silenced or muzzled and if they can destroy my credibility as they did Martin Luther King first, take him down in the eyes of his people and then assassinate him. I don't believe that America is beyond that. I believe it's being discussed right now in the White House. I believe it's being discussed by certain members of Congress. How are you gonna deal with Farrakhan? Yes, I presented you with a dilemma, but I'm warning America. I'm not Martin Luther King. I'm not Malcolm X. I'm in a little different time frame. And I think you would be wise to see if God is with me, and if God is with me, you would be well to leave me alone. That's right. Louis Farrakhan isn't afraid to call out the truth, even when it makes the most powerful institutions uncomfortable. But why does the U.S. government fear his words so much? Why does the media portray him as a threat? Because Louis Farrakhan challenges the system at its very core. He's a voice that cannot be controlled and that terrifies those who want to maintain the status quo. From the White House to mainstream media outlets, they've all worked tirelessly to discredit him, to label him as dangerous and divisive and radical. But here's what they don't tell you. The truth is dangerous to those who benefit from lies. Farrakhan is dangerous because he is a voice of resistance. He challenges the narrative that those in power use to control the masses. He asks the questions they refuse to answer. And when you do that, you become a terror to the oppressors. 
Louis Farrakhan's message is about more than just resistance. It's about empowerment. It's about uniting communities, about breaking the chains of mental, social, and economic oppression. And that is what makes him a true force to be reckoned with. Let's watch this next clip where Farrakhan breaks down exactly why economic power is the key to liberation. White man bought a trading post in the jungle of that continent. The original people live on this continent and they are the ones who strayed away from civilization and are living a jungle life. Now many of our brothers and sisters who are called Africans, what you see in the tribes and in the splitting up of our family is the fact that we have strayed from the light of civilization. For Allah says in the Quran, I made you into tribes and families and nations that you may know one another and not despise one another. Wherever you see a proliferation of many, many, many tribes of one people, then the people have lost the light of civilization because the light of civilization would cause an evolutionary motion in the people which would bring them from a tribe into a nation. Yes. When the white people or devils were in Europe, they had many tribal names. The Angles, the Saxons, the Vikings, the Goths, the Visigoths, right? All of these were names of tribes. But when the light of truth dawned on Europe, the Angles and the Saxons came together, the Celts and the Normans, huh? yes, sir. the Germanic tribes came together and they formed nations. So now in Europe, you hear no mention of tribal names. You hear England, France, Germany, Spain. But when you go to Africa, where they have the boundaries of a nation, you hear people paying more attention to their tribe than their nation. So there is a knowledge missing that would evolve them out of a tribal a development into a nation and a world. When you go among the Native Americans, you hear them saying, I am Sioux, I am Lakota, I am Dakota, I am Iroquois, I am Blackfoot, huh? I am Cree. All of these tribal names demonstrate that the knowledge is not present that would evolve them out of a tribe into one great family diminishing tribal customs, tribal language, giving them national custom, national language. The white people who set up a trading post on the continent of, of, of what is called Africa wanted us to believe that the people on that continent are the only people that we have. They do this to try to divide us. Yes. We have black people that have been all over this earth and have settled everywhere on the earth. You may not know it, but there are black people in China, black people in Japan, black people in Korea, black people in India, black people in Australia, in Fiji, in New Zealand, in Australia, black people in Indonesia, in all of the islands there that they call Peloponnesia, in the Hawaiian Islands, blacks there. When you come to North America, we came here before Columbus. That's right. 
There's a sign that blacks were here in the Americas long before Christopher Columbus was even a thought in the mind of his father. When you argue over whether you should be African or African American, this betrays a lack of knowledge of self. Who was America named after? Amerigo Vespucci, right. an Italian, right. before he was an Italian, right. we were, before white folk ever came into the light of the world, we were, what do we look like? taking a name after a Johnny come lately like Amerigo Vespucci. Look. And of course, for us to say African American, this is a rather nationalistic, even racist, kind of statement. If this whole Western Hemisphere is divided into three Americas, North America, Central America, South America, but nobody calls themselves an American but the people who live in the 50 states. You'll never go to Canada and find the Canadian calling himself a Canadian American. He's a Canadian. That's right. You will never go to Mexico and find the Mexican saying, I'm a Mexican Central American, or a Nicaraguan Central American, or a Costa Rican Central American, or a Honduran or Panamanian Central American. I am a Panamanian. I am a Nicaraguan. I am a Guatemalan. I am a Costa Rican. Huh? No America. You go down to South America. They don't say, I am a Peruvian South American. I am a Peruvian. I am a Bolivian. I am a Chilean. Huh? I am a Brazilian. I am a Colombian. I am a Venezuelan. Nobody uses America but these who live in the 50 states. And how did you become an American? When did you become an American? Under what circumstances have you become an American? Huh? And white folks felt so threatened by our calling ourselves black and identifying with black people all over the world. He wanted to change us from calling ourselves black so he subtly changed the name. Called us minorities the disadvantaged, the permanent underclass. Man, what are you talking about? We're not a minority. When you think of yourself as a black man, then you start counting all the black people on the earth and we become the majority outnumbering the white man 11 to one. Let him call himself the minority. Now, you say this is racist teaching, some of the silly ones among you. You say this is a racist teaching. I say no, it is a truth teaching that is designed to bust up the mind of racism. Racism destroyed the black man's identity of self. Racism hid from the white man even the origin of his own civilization that began with black people. None of the scholars at Cornell or anywhere that I go argue with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad that Greek civilization is not the beginning of civilization. It all began in Africa and it all began with your fathers, black people. When I said to the white students, your fathers did you a disservice. They didn't tell you that the origin of mathematics of science, physics, chemistry, medicine, law, philosophy, government, trade, commerce, navigation, 
engineering all started with the black man. They don't argue because we can prove our point. So the Hispanic brother got up and raised the question. He said, sir, we could say that the black man has not evolved from his original state. If others came from the black man, they left him behind because others evolved and the black man, it appears, has not evolved. We could say that. Well, what he was telling me is, you're trying to tell us that you all were first. I don't like that. So I'm gonna throw this back at you. We could say that you people, black people, have not evolved yet from a primitive state. I said, sir, with all due respect, with all due respect, if we gave civilization to you and your fathers, you cannot say we had not evolved because we evolved you. Listen, listen. They are now unearthing civilizations under the sands in Africa that are more sophisticated and more developed show more signs of higher mathematics and law and science than the present world in which we live. The first wonder of this world is the pyramid and the sphinx. And the whole history of the world is written in the stones of the pyramid. Now think about this. White folk have yet to figure the pyramid out. The black man put it there, left it there, then put a black face on the body of a lion and set him out in the desert majestically, sit him there and then went on about his business and went to sleep. Listen, so that when white folk built their world, they would still have to go back to Egypt to find out where it all began and they would see this sphinx majestically sitting there, a black face on the body of a lion saying that I am the ruler, I am the lion, I am the king. I'm asleep, but I've left a sign that before you were, I am. And after you go, I shall be, for I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending of it all. It's no wonder they're afraid of him. Farrakhan teaches not just resistance, but the tools for liberation. He exposes the systems designed to keep the oppressed in a cycle of dependency. He gives people the knowledge and the confidence to break free. But censorship, bans, and criticism, none of it has silenced him. If anything, it's only amplified his message. Because every time they try to shut him down, more people ask themselves, what is it that he's saying that they don't want us to hear? Farrakhan knows the stakes, and yet he continues to speak. He speaks because he knows the power of his words. He speaks because he knows that silence is the weapon of the oppressor. To the oppressed, Louis Farrakhan is a beacon of hope. To the oppressors, he is their worst nightmare. He is a terror because he speaks the truth. And the truth has always been the greatest threat to tyranny. If you believe in the power of truth, in the power of words to ignite change, then help us spread this message. Hit that like button. Share this video with everyone you know, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Join the movement. Together, we will break the silence. Together, we will stand with those who terrorize the oppressors by speaking the truth.